Hello there and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to take a break from the Dissidia Duodicum playthrough. And I'm going to be playing a game on the Sega Genesis called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the Movie. Now there have been multiple um, ports of this game. But uh, the one here on the Sega Genesis is the one that closely, most closely follows the plot. The one Super Nintendo doesn't. And I'm not sure if there's any other versions out there, but those are the only two I've played that relate to the movie. But anyway, let's do this thing. Let's put this on hard mode and get started. <clears throat> Alright, there's our ultimate big bad for this game. Avenues. He's a man comprised of purple snot. <laughs> anyway, uh, most most players will read the story for you. I'm not going to do that. It's right there if you want to read it. I stuck at reading. <laughs> All right, here's stage one. Uh, I'm just going to start in order here. Starting with the Blue Ranger and just working my way down. And I find it funny that he's saying Triceratops there because at this point in the movie, um, he has like the Ninjetti animal spirit. So he should have been a wolf. No. Spoiler for the movie there, folks. <laughs> so I did a couple of playthroughs earlier. One where I even tried to record it. And then my recording software screwed up. By the way, you'll notice that the music's back here. I decided to say the hell with YouTube and um, play with music uh, turned on because I hate playing a game without music and I'm sure that this will make some of the silent parts of the playthrough here less awkward. So, I mean thousands of other players do it. So. That's the old grapple I'm not even going to worry about it. Okay, but these ooze men, you have to be careful about them. They come up from, uh, coming at you from behind like that. <laughs> and they're actually tougher to beat than the petties later in the game. Which is strange. At least they are to me. So... There's that. One thing I should talk about is that when you're fighting on a screen that has enemies on it, it takes a while before you can clear them off. Because they just keep coming. Look at this. And there's our third batch <laughs> on this screen. Alright. Now if you hold down the regular attack button, 
each Power Ranger will do something depending on the weapon he or she has. That one doesn't burn up life, but uh, the special attack button does. So, got through that stage pretty quickly. There are points which do nothing in the game at all. You don't even get a um, extra life or anything like that. And this cinema scene right here, this cutscene, they kind of—I think they uh, missed an opportunity here. They could have covered a lot of the stuff in the game, or in the movie, and put it in the game, but they didn't. Instead, they put like three stages and nothing but flashbacks. This cutscene will cover 75% of the movie. <laughs> right here where the Power Rangers get the Ninjetti powers they had to go through a, a spot where they had to fight like skeleton creatures they, they mentioned them there and the stone gargoyles which were big troll looking things they didn't look more like gargoyles they look more like trolls but Still, this game came the closest uh, when it came to following the plot of the movie, so. Funny thing is, I played the one on Super Nintendo before I even saw the movie. And they had one uh, called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie too, but the only thing I had in common with the movie was I had Ivan Ooze at the end. That was it. And when I played that, I was thinking, well, if they're going to follow the plot of the movie, then this has got to be the biggest fucked up movie ever. <laughs> and the power is on. Well, I sure as hell hope so. Otherwise, I'm sitting here with a controller in my hand for nothing. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, let's go to stage two. We will go with the Yellow Ranger. You know, there's a funny thing concerning <coughs> concerning the Power Rangers, excuse me, that I read about. There was a rumor that some of them had gone over and started doing porn. And when I heard that, I, I thought I'd go check it out. Turns out, it turns out they were, they weren't correct, but I can see where they made the mistake at. Um, the one who played Jason in the original uh, Power Rangers, the Red Ranger, it was said that he was into porn, and and I went and looked that up because I just couldn't believe it, you know. By the way, and he grabbed that uh, Tyrannosaurus coin that gives you an extra credit, extra life, so you want to grab as many of those as possible. I think there's only two in the entire game that I've been able to find. But uh, anyway, back to what I was saying. Turns out he wasn't into porn, but it was a lookalike who was and I thought oh, I screwed up but the article I read did have some interesting things to uh, say about what they're doing now I see you had uh, Jason who is actually not doing acting now he's actually a paramedic so he's 
He's out there saving lives, so that's good. Um, Trini, she, unfortunately, uh, the, the girl who played Trini, she, she died back in 2001 in a car accident coming home from uh, planning a wedding. But I thought it was pretty neat that, uh, according to the article I read, that her fellow cast members from the show, Power Rangers, attended her funeral. Everyone that did except Tommy, because um, his brother had died around the same time, and he had those arrangements to go to. So he did send uh, his condolences to the family. So, you know, reading that, I was thinking, well, you know, they must have, they must have had... Uh, a real friendship going on but um, I see who else Kimberly she's she's still doing uh, TV as far as I know of she's in a show called Flashpoint I think she plays an EMT not certain though you can look that up on the internet movie database IMDB dot com if you want um, let's see David Yost who plays Billy the Blue Ranger he, uh, he's not into porn, but he did come out of the closet, as far as I know of, and is now openly gay, and he spends his time fighting for gay rights, and, um, he does things like comic book conventions, and things like that. So that's pretty cool. Zack, the one who played Zack, he, um, he's still doing martial arts movies as far as I know of. Um, although he had a funny story, never really said it in the article, but apparently he's now missing a finger on one of his hands. So, I don't know how that came about. Beep, beep. Um, let's see, who else? Oh, the one who plays Adam in the movie, the Power Rangers the movie, and then some of the later episodes. Uh, that's Johnny Young Bosch, who now does voice acting for lots of different uh, animated movies and video games. I think I mentioned that in one of my Dissidia videos that I haven't posted yet. But, um, Rocky and Aisha, I haven't really read anything about. Tommy. Uh, the actor who played him, Jason David Frank. Um, He's got probably the coolest thing going on right now. He's an MMA fighter. It's like, uh, I don't know, I guess it's like ultimate fighting, if you don't know what that is. But, um, there was a photograph in the article, uh, accompanying the article, I should say, that had him and Zach and Billy sitting around uh, just chewing the fat. So I guess they they do have a friendship thing going on, which, you know, is pretty cool. Anyway, let's get back to the game here. Just thought I'd share that little bit of Power Ranger related knowledge. Female Bruce Lee. <laughs> Look, that's what they sound like when they do that. I don't. It's not like they're always trying to imitate Bruce Lee there. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, moving on. 
Now this part right here should be the last screen for stage two. That move I just did there, you don't want to do that one too often. That's a special attack. That one drains your health when you use it. Ooh, I need some life up. Ah. You see him dodge that? He was just being con inconvenient. Okay, here we gotta fight the boss, which is a Scorpitron, which are the machines that I have a news dug up in the movie. Yeah, I'm putting a lot of spoilers from the movie in here, but hey, if you're watching this game, then uh, you're going to be spoiled anyway. I'm going to use the Falcon Zord because I like him better. Tap forward twice and he does this. Keep tapping your attack button, he does a combo. Special attack does that. But you don't want to do that too often because, again, it drains your health. So. That about does it for the explanation of the Falcon Zord. <laughs> Thunder Cougar Falcon Bird. And if you get that reference, then, uh, give yourself a cookie. thing reminds me of something out of the Transformers, an Insecticon or something. Ah, <laughs> my combo no work. about that. That is the Falcon Zord's charge up attack. That was a nice one. And that takes care of him. Takes care of stage two. Okay, now here's where we deviate from the movie in a big way. This is a flashback chapter. And there's three of them out of the six in the game. But it does cover some of the important episodes, so... They didn't reminisce in the movie at all, so... That's one of the things they changed in this. Which you can't expect too much, it's a... It's a Sega Genesis game. Still very fun to play, so there's that. 
All right, that's around the time Tommy became the uh, White Ranger. Notice now we have Trini, Jason. I don't know what's going on with him out there. <laughs> um, and Zach. We'll go with Jason. On this one, we have uh, the Petty Patrol to deal with. And they're a lot easier to take out than those Zeus men were. <clears throat> Crap. Tiger uppercut. <laughs> and if you're a gamer and you don't get that reference, then <laughs> you need to play more games. Petty Patrol. Almost sounds like Tweety Bird trying to say something naughty. Okay, let me tell you something about the coins you pick up. The pterodactyl is the uh, is a life up coin. The other two life up coins are the Triceratops and the uh, White Tiger, I think. Um, Triceratops is the. It fills up the least amount, I think. And the White, uh, the white Tiger fills up a medium amount, and the Pterodactyl fills up the most. So, that's what those are for. The Mastodon and Sabertooth Tiger. Those coins are only worth points. That's 1,000 and 3,000, respectively. Um, and of course, the Tyrannosaurus we've already covered. That's like an extra credit or a one up, if you will. Because you only get one life in this game and you have to continue, but you can continue right there on the spot. So, it's like having another life. Up here should be the second of three mini bosses. Or at least it will be after I defeat these. <laughs> I hate this thing, the one with the big ears, Scarlet Sentinel here. Hmm. Usually this thing fucks me over big time, I don't know what's going on there. Oh well, worked. <laughs> Another Triceratops coin. There's a Mastodon. Huh. I think the Sentinel ring here is the weakest of the three. most dangerous was the ear one. And now here's the fun part. I get to fight all three. Oh damn. I 
That one has uncanny aim. That guy right there, the sentinel ring. Uh, had to get rid of the ear one. I didn't really want to uh, use the special move there because of the health drain, but. I had to take a calculated risk. Hmm. Well, I lived, so that's all good. And now we're going to go with the whole theme of make everything bigger. Because <laughs> if it doesn't work the first hundred times, maybe the hundred and first is good. Mm, I don't like the White Tiger Zord in this game, so I'm going to go with Thunder Mega Zord. These are not really all that difficult with the Thunder Megazord. They're playing the uh, Tiger Zord's theme music there. I think I took care of them. Got some points. <laughs> Now Buck and Skull are pretty stupid. Stage four. I think this is Um Yeah, this one has a secret on it. And I am going to show you that secret. You have an optional boss fight on this level. Where you can fight Lord Zed. Let's see. If I can remember where that is. I like the music for this level. Speaking of the music, uh, all the music in this game is music that's found in the show. Let's see. Go over here.
flying sidekick. <laughs> Trying to think of other Power Ranger related material I could talk about, but there really isn't a whole lot to say. It's a show for kids. Um, I used to watch it as a grown up. Because my little nephew used to watch it. You know, it's, it's corny fun, the show is. And by corny, I mean corny. <laughs> but it also had some positive stuff in it, so. That's good for the kids. Good for grown ups, too. The grown ups could use a little bit of positivity. Oh my god, how many of these petties are there? I'm going to be uh, needing a life up pretty soon. Hmm. See what I meant when I said there's a whole bunch of enemies in this game? And it takes you forever to clear to clear one level or one screen. Ah, we're near the end. Okay, now we go through here. Should be this one up here. This should take us to Lord Zed. Yep. Hmm. Bam. All this pattern that I'm doing here, and you shouldn't get hurt much. <laughs> and that's the optional boss fight with Zed. Really easy to get to. Just pay attention to your path that you're going through. Oh, I picked a Barak. <laughs> I was wondering what that was. Tommy's charge up skill is that. Oh, the boss on this level is Goldar. Then you have to fight Goldar again. And then you have to fight him again. You have to fight him no less than three times and all of it in a row. Thankfully you'll get to refill your health in between battles, so... That's good. I just wish they didn't have to have so many Goldar fights. He's, he's a little bit tougher on this game than he is in the show. I'll show you my strategy for beating Goldar here.
you pretend you're a street fighter <laughs> and do a flash kick on them. You do that by getting underneath them and then uh, jumping and hitting the attack button. Just jump straight up. You don't have to take your life bar down all the way. Getting past a certain point. And he'll just fly off. Don't worry about the time. The time is just there for your points. If time runs out, you don't die or anything. Flash kick. <laughs> Sonic boom. I didn't think that kick was going to work. There he goes. And here we go with this scene again. He's going to make him grow, grow, grow. As I pointed out before, I don't like the white tiger zord, but yeah, I'm going to use the thunder mega zord. I'm sorry, I'm just better with him. Goldar tends to block most of your straight attacks, so you had to catch him when he's in the air. Unfortunately, you cannot jump with the Megazord, so you just have to find a different way of beating him. Oh yeah, and he has that attack. Let's try to knock him out of the sky, that's the way I do it, usually. Damage is not that good, but... better than dying. Again, you don't have to wipe out his whole life bar here. You just have to um, get it down to a certain amount. Oh, something I don't get here is every time I knock him to the ground, I take damage. What's up with that? <laughs> Maybe that's the time. Yeah, I believe it's the time. So the time timer doesn't kill you outright, it just slowly drains your health afterward. 
I just found that out. I may have to continue here. Yep. Well, at least I will try the white tiger resort. Well, flew off. I hate it when that happens. That I have to continue just as he's flying off. Oh well. We still have to fight Goldar one more time. That's at the start of this next level. In the meantime, Jason, Zach, and Trini have been invited to the International Peace Summit. What this means is the actors' contracts have run out. And they did not to renew. <laughs> New the Forbidden Planet to get the Sword of Legend. That sounds something out of an RPG. Okay, on this one we're going to use Kimberly. I'm secure enough of my masculinity that I can get away with that. Same strategy applies as before. You get underneath them, flash kick them to death if you can. See, the problem with this level is it's not Goldar that's, uh, that's the most dangerous. Ouch. Flash kick. <laughs> All right. Cosmic dick bag. This is the only Power Rangers game I've seen where Kimberly's bow and arrow actually has a use. Oh, come on. And there's the real danger. And now I'm not talking about the putties. Run, get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> Ow. Luckily, there's no real boss at the end of this level. It's just a statue you have to kill. Well, break open. More of those useless points. I'd like to have a life up if I can get one. I don't think I'm going to though. Got 3,000 points.
Alright, well, we tried her. Let's try the Black Ranger. It's the only one we haven't used yet. See the dragon up there? He's the one that's dropping all the bomb things. We got this one sewed up. At least I think we do. Oh yeah. One last fight to to do. That's for the boss battle. Now he's just going to shout that out there, right? <laughs> Go kick some news. What if that was a clever way of her trying to say ass? <laughs> I don't know. I'll get they show it to us, then they show it to us again. <laughs> I guess that's to underline the threat. Hmm. Stage 6. Mm, this time we'll go with the Ninja Megazord. I always thought the Ninja Megazord looked like he had this big grin on his face. I'm weird that way. Here's where I'll probably burn through a continue or two. By the way, if you dash forward. Ninja Megazord does the spin kick. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. That one gives me a little bit of trouble. And here we go to the final scene and the final fight on the moon. Falcon Zord is going to attach itself to the Ninja Megazord, but when we get to the actual fight, it's nowhere around. <laughs> Ah, uh -huh, sucker punched your ass. Ow. Just the insane amount of health that thing takes off. Ooh, he comboed me that time. Well,
We'll go Falcon Zord. <laughs> Are you guys watching this seriously? I did not want to go down that time. Today's top ten. Oh, don't worry, I wasn't the end of it. I will put my little name in here. And we will watch the final cutscene and credits. And in the movie, they had this little fight where they were in space. And they trap them in a, uh, into getting hit by a comet. And that's what destroys them. Now, here's the sad thing. Notice I played this game on hard mode. The ending is no different on the other difficulties at all. There's Bulk and Skull. Glory Hounds is what they are. Of course nobody believes them. And here's the credits. So yeah, all in all, I think it's a pretty good game. Pretty good beat 'em up. I like beat 'em ups. Um, uh, ending wasn't all that great. But it's it's a pretty fun game to while the to while an hour or two away with. And that is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie for Sega Genesis. And it stuck to the plot somewhat of the movie. Unlike the Super Nintendo version because Sega does what Nintendo don't. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I know I should be shot for that. Oh wow, you're still watching? Huh. Figured you would have already stopped the video by now. Nothing else here but credits, you know. There's no Easter egg. That one note in this song always sounds like it's just a slightly off key.
John Pettigrew. Mm -hmm. Marketing manager, James Garner. <laughs> that <was> John Garner. <laughs> Thought old Brett Maverick had uh, something to do with this game. That's probably way before most of your time. <laughs> most of the people's time is watching this. Look it up on the internet. <laughs> well, I hope that name is pronounced Koch. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have probably gotten a, funny, uh, a lot of funny looks as a kid. <laughs> Special thanks to all our staff. That's right, we're going to make sure we got everybody. Just in case we miss someone. <laughs> anyway. This is Dark Moon 75. Hope you enjoyed the uh, playthrough and the commentary. If you did, great. Hope you watch more of my stuff. If you didn't, uh, go watch something else. <laughs> Thank you for watching.